So here's the situation. There has been plenty of CEOs from Google to Nvidia saying learning to code is a waste of time. Everyone's talking like AI is gonna end coding. You've got folks on social media saying LLM models are gonna replace software engineers completely, followed by the question of why learn to code when AI can just write code for you? Okay, sure, maybe it is, maybe it won't. But one thing is for sure, software engineers are needed today, but they're potentially not needed in the same way they were five years ago, and the role will definitely change within the next five to 10 years. So in this video, I'm gonna go over 11 rules on how you can learn to code this year, and I'm gonna have an honest discussion about should you even learn to code anymore? And we're just gonna kinda of jump into it. So rule number one, we gotta start with it, and it's gonna be use AI, but don't let AI use you. AI is kind of wild. I use it daily for my work, both ChatGPT and whatever the most popular coding model is for that day. I use all of those models inside Cursor AI daily. The most I use it is when I create new projects from scratch, but I do that often since I create YouTube content often. I ask it to start an app, maybe write a SQL query, sometimes debug an error, and it'll shoot back an answer within seconds, whether it's right or wrong, who knows. But the biggest advantage I have is that I am a professional engineer and I have over 10 years of experience already. I know when the AI spits out BS and what needs fixed based on just reading a bug. And that's not just me. I think anyone who learned how to code the hard way, like five plus years ago, has an advantage. You need to learn how to code before you can use AI to help you code. If you lean on LLMs too early, you will skip the struggle. You'll skip the learning. You might get working code, but you won't understand why it works or understand if there are better ways of doing it. And if something breaks, you may not know how to fix it without relying on an LLM. This makes your app very unmaintainable because LLMs can hallucinate like crazy. So here's my take. Use AI 100%, but use it after you've tried. Try to solve that thing first, even if it's messy, even if you fail. Then you can ask the model, how would I implement this Python loop or whatever it is that you want to implement? But if you start with AI, you might not learn it. But if you try first and then use AI, that's where the magic happens. Now you've got two solutions. You can compare, refactor, learn. So use AI as a force multiplier, not a crutch. Your Batman, AI's Robin. You drive the Batmobile. Now, rule number two is build weirdly specific projects. So let's talk about projects for a second. If you're learning to code, there's like a 99.9% chance your first three projects are gonna look like one of these three things. A to-do app, a weather app, a calculator with buttons, and only kind of works. And hey, I'm not knocking those projects. Those projects are fine and they really do help beginners. That's why a lot of tutorials are using those three things. They're structured in a way that's easy to follow and they help you learn the basics. But here's the problem. They don't actually teach you to think like a developer outside the basics. So what are these weirdly specific projects that you should build that I'm talking about? Well, first, let me kind of talk about me and my buddies. My buddy, when we were in university, built a device he could put in a washer and it would let him know when the community washer was not being used. And I once built an iOS app that was never accepted into the app store, it kept getting declined, that I could type in an item like MacBook Pro and it gave me prices from like multiple different sources like Amazon, Walmart, whatever, so I could compare and see where the cheapest item is. These are sort of unique and it's hard to find the exact information online, but they'll make you a better developer overall because you have to actually think. You actually have to create the product. You have to design the product. And it helps if you're actually interested in the product that you're building. Rule number three is to learn in public. You don't need to be an expert to post online. I do YouTube. I do LinkedIn. Those are my top two platforms. Creating and learning in public is magic. I promise you it's scary as hell at first, but it ends up being really cool. A lot of my posts and YouTube content, I have to learn those subjects first. I have to literally learn it before I can create content on it. And some of the best content I see online comes from people who are just starting out and are wanting to share their life as they figure it out. It's really cool and it kind of shows their progress and their growth through you know the public eyes and public items. And you might think, why would anyone care that I might've just learned Python decorators? But to someone who is just a step behind you, that's gold. There's multiple times where I create a video or a post thinking it's going to flop or that it's stupid. And then become some of my best items, like not even joking. And what helps and why it's so interesting is you're documenting, you're reflecting, you're helping others and you're building up a, a portfolio without even trying. That is why I'm here. That is why I'm on LinkedIn. It's because visibility compounds and people don't hire or trust mystery devs. 
Rule number four is that tools are temporary, thinking is forever. So tech stacks change constantly, the fundamentals do not. How you break down problems does not change. How you structure your business logic does not change. How you decide and discuss performance and security within an application does not change. That's what separates real engineers from people who watch tutorials all the time or vibe coders is they know how to build applications. Frameworks are great. They really are. And it allows us to create products quicker than we've ever have before. But they're just layers on top of the fundamentals. So go deep on core skills like learn deep Python, then fast API will make more sense. Learn how the web works. And then all of a sudden, HTTP will make more sense. <laughs> when you understand the why, you can learn any what. Now, rule number five is you need more consistency, not more motivation. Motivation is unreliable. It's great on Sundays when you binge watch tutorials and you're saying, hey, I'm going to be a software engineer tonight. But what about Tuesday after work when you're tired? That's where consistency comes in. And I truly, I truly believe consistency is what matters the most. Like for me, I didn't become a software engineer right after college. My first job was a business analyst who is someone who works in the middle of the software and the business side. So I kind of say to the software engineers what the business wants and I kind of translate it. When I was working as a business analyst though, I always knew I wanted to be a software engineer. So what did I do? I spent every single night learning how to become a developer. I learned how to be a software engineer, and I think that's what puts me in a unique situation on like YouTube and other platforms, as I know how many of you feel. And the only thing that can get you where you want to go is consistency. You gotta do it every day. Now, you don't have to do exactly what I did. Like I, at that time, I had no family. Now I have a wife, I have a child, I have a kiddo on the way. There's no way I could put that amount of time into learning to code like I did before. But I know if I was learning how to code today, even with all this, I would still be consistent with it, just maybe at a smaller degree. All right, so now rule number six is to track progress like an athlete. I was a college basketball player. My whole life before I graduated was about developing my basketball skills. How did I develop my basketball skills? One, I put in work, and two, I tracked my progress. So if athletes track their progress, why do so many devs just kind of wing it? And I'm included in that. So we bounce from tutorial to tutorial, hoping something just sticks. But here's the truth is progress in code feels invisible unless it's documented somewhere. So for example, you may spend hours debugging why your form won't submit. Then you'll find a solution, you'll fix it, you'll close the tab and then kind of like forget it even happens. And a week later, you're like, ugh, I'm not even improving. But you are, you just didn't track it. It's hard to measure your growth. So I would start a dev journal. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. It can be physical book or simply online. It doesn't matter. Just somewhere you can spend three to five minutes after you learn something so you can say like what you've learned and what you're still confused about. Then when you document your journey, you have areas where you can like reread and then you can reflect and look back on how much growth you've had. You won't believe how far away you were just a few months ago and how much you've actually grown until that moment. Now, rule number seven is that foundations is greater than frameworks. This is something that you really want to make sure you learn now and not later. You can learn fast API in a few weeks if you have a really strong Python foundation. But if you don't understand Python deeply, that app you built using fast API is kind of held together by duct tape. Same goes for any tool in software. You got to start with the foundations. Frameworks are amazing, but they're built on the fundamentals. So maybe like an example is you want to learn how HTTP works. You want to learn what restful endpoints are. You want to learn how database queries data. The deeper you understand the core items, the faster you can pick up on anything else in software. Now, rule number eight is learn backend and front end at first. Now, I think this is good advice. It's what I did. Um, I learned them both. I know I wanted to be a back engineer, so I spent more time in back end engineering, but it was hard to create a back end product that doesn't have a front end. So I learned how to do both at the same time, and I'd assume this part has gotten easier, maybe with AI, but grab a CSS framework like Tailwind CSS or Bootstrap to help even more to help make it look nicer. And this is what kept me motivated. I wanted to build a real freaking project, not something dumb, a real project, something I would want to use. And for me to use it, there must be a back end that is reliable and it needs to have a good front end because why would I want to use something that has a bad front end? And that's the real thing. Real software has a good front end and it has a real back end. It's never just back end or front end. It's both, always both. Now, rule number nine is don't wait until you feel ready. If you're waiting to feel ready before you build that first project, before you apply to that first job, before you start 
posting online or creating code online, you're going to be waiting a really long time, maybe forever. Maybe you'll never become a software engineer because you're waiting. Because here's the truth that trips up so many developers. You'll never be ready. You just never will be. You got to start today. And that's completely normal. Like I've mentioned before, when I was learning how to um, become a software engineer, I was coding every night for at least a year and applying to every job in my area starting at like two months into learning. Because I figured like, what's the worst thing that can happen? And I filled a lot of interviews. Each failed interview taught me what people were looking for. Each failed project that I tried to create taught me more and more about how software works. I remember I was applying for a junior position and someone asked me what's an alternative to an if else statement. I had no idea, no clue on what they were asking me. So I replied, I don't know. And they were like, oh, it's a ternary operator. And I remember thinking, what the heck is a ternary operator? I went home, did some research and found my answer. And I was like, well, now I feel dumb. It's, it's so obvious. But why I'm saying that story is do not give up. Everything is just a stepping stone to getting better and better. And another part that goes with that is that your brain is wired to protect you. Every time you think, should I build build, you know, this app, your brain's like, what if it sucks? And then you might have a thought like, should I contribute to this GitHub issue? And your brain is like, what if it's wrong? And you look dumb in front of everybody. Like these go through your thoughts. They went through my thoughts all the time before I started posting on like publicly. It's just how we're wired. We want safety. We want comfort. We want approval. But that's the exact thing that keeps people stuck forever. Go ahead and just get out there and try it. Now, rule number 10 is to build ugly before you build beautiful. From the start, we all want to build professional applications, right? This one was a bit hard for me to follow completely, this, this rule. And that's because I wanted to build a side project that was usable from the very beginning. I wanted to build it now. I didn't want to go through the hustle of trying to learn software development. Just give me my code. This is what it is. It's a million dollar idea. I didn't want to, uh, you know, break through that barrier of entry, which is learning how to build software. But here's the thing. You have to learn how to build software. No code solutions are here and they're not that bad, but nothing is even close to the power of what software engineers can create at their fingertips. We all want clean UIs. We all want scalable backends and for everything to be great and perfect. But if you're just starting out, ignore all of that. It's all noise. That obsession with, you know, perfect polish is going to slow you way down. Most devs don't realize is this. The more you chase perfect design upfront, the less actual progress you'll make. You may fall into the trap of endless tweaking, like customizing your code that doesn't really move the needle and not worrying about the code that you actually need to, you know, create and enhance. And now it's been like three hours and you've changed 12 abstractions of the same object, but your submit button still doesn't work. You got to focus on the important things of software development. Now, lastly, rule number 11 is you have to be comfortable not knowing the answer. Let's be real straight up. You're going to feel dumb a lot. You're going to hit bugs. You can't explain. You'll Google or use AI to ask the same same question, the same error 10 times over and over again, you're going to copy and paste code you barely understand. And that's all okay. Every dev does it. Heck, all seniors do it. The difference is seniors don't panic. They don't pretend to know. They ask questions, they read documents, and they experiment and figure it out because they have experience. They, they, they've seen this before. You're not behind. You're just in the part of the process where growth happens. So just keep believing in yourself. The rules have changed. You know, the tools are different. The bar is higher. The noise is louder. So just go ahead, start today, start building, and I'll see you on the other side.